So if you could choose like top three must read books that our audience should read, what are those top three books? I have to go with uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, just like great communication, social skills type of book. Mindset by Cal Dweck it talks about how to have like a growth mindset and like how, you know, if you're not good at one area, that's just because you haven't practiced it enough and you can get better at it. Uh, so that was really like an eye opening book that actually um, another uh, management professor who went to Harvard Business School recommended. So I was like, okay, I trust you. So that was a good one. And Atomic Habits is another great one by James Clear. So it's like the number one best selling nonfiction book for the past couple of years for good yeah. reason because like yeah. super actionable, great stories. And like all of us have habits that good habits we want to build and like bad habits we want to break. So if you just read those three books this year, uh, your life will probably change. Okay. I mean, this is similar, but slightly different. But what would be the top book to read if you want to become more successful? This is a great book. Uh, the One Thing. It's all about how, yeah, any topic or project you're working on, there's usually one thing that is kind of like you'll get 80% of the work done in just like 20% of the effort. Uh, so you want to find out what is the most important thing that you should be working on right now. And then if you just work on that, everything else will solve itself. Mm. Um, so for me, it's like I need to read these books so that way I could create content about them. Mm -hmm. That's some important work. Yeah, because the, the I create the content, the audience grows, I get more like newsletter subscribers, and then I get more like uh, course sales. Um, so like that's the one thing. If I stop reading, that that domino like gets stuck and nothing else like happens from it. So yeah. you want to ask yourself, you know, if you're a YouTuber, it's probably like recording the YouTube videos because, you know, if you're not uploading anything, you can't, you know, edit anything and you can't like grow your audience. So you really want to ask yourself, what's like the most important thing I should be working on right now? And then if you do the one thing, you don't have to worry about all like the hundred small things going on um, because you're getting like the vast majority of the work done. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a great productivity book. And like you could apply that to like er any area of your life. Okay. Um, what about the best relationship book that you've read because you mentioned you got into that as well there's a really good book men are from mars women are from venus i think john gray was author of that it's not super based on science but a lot of his like a lot of his strategies have been like proven later on if you do want like a scientific relationship book any book by john and julie gottman they run the gottman institute which they have been literally studying relationships for like things like 50 years or some like crazy number like that they wrote this great book for guys, uh, What Women Want, or um, A Man's Guide to Woman. I think that's what it's called, <laughs> Man Guides to Woman. And that's like super helpful as a guy um, and just talks about like, okay, here are what the studies say. You know, here are like some stories and lessons behind it. Uh, so as a single dude, uh, that's like a great book. Um, but if you're like, a, you know, part of the female audience, I think uh, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus are a great book because it shows you dif differences between how men communicate and women communicate. Like, I learned this, you know, being in a relationship for three years, like guys, they kind of want that alone time. He calls like the cave time to like think and digest and like be by themselves. Women, they want to talk about what they're feeling and what's going through their mind. And they don't exactly want solutions. They just want to talk through what's going on. And that's how they kind of process information. Mm -hmm. So just seeing the differences between how men and women uh, process information and how they communicate uh, was super helpful. So highly recommend those two books. Yeah, that one sounds very relevant. I'm, I'm me with my boyfriend. We're always talking about how we communicate differently, and we're yeah. It, it's, it's always a topic of communication, actually. How we're so different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about health? Uh, maybe you could share three books because health is a big category. But must read health books. There's a great book, Ikigai, that studies people in Japan because they have like the highest concentration of centenarians, the people that live to 100 plus. And it talks about what are the habits of these people that are living to 100 plus. The book Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, because like sleep is probably the most important uh, part of your life. Like if you're not getting good sleep, every area of your life and health drops dramatically. Like, you know, you could go, I think it's like three months without food, three weeks without water, but you can't go longer than, you know, I think the longest someone went without sleep was like five or six days. And then you like die if you don't get sleep. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Peter Atia's new book that just came out, Outlive. Uh, that, that's another great book. Uh, it's a bit it's a bit thick, but he covers a lot of uh, valuable information and topics about like here are the five most common ways people die, and then here's like how to avoid it. So, outlive, uh, icky guy, and why we sleep. Okay, great, love it. Thanks. I'm I'm like taking notes. <laughs> Literally, I'm planning to like add these books to my list. Yeah. Okay, what is the weirdest book that you've read that you really enjoyed? <laughs> anything comes to mind yeah is good 
slash crazy book called The Forgotten Highlander. So this guy was a World War II soldier. And I don't know if he was the luckiest person to ever live or the unluckiest. Mm. So World War II, he was drafted into war, you know, unlucky. He got captured by the Japanese, unlucky. He was like prisoner of war for two and a half years. And he talks about the crazy story of how like he survives. And then he gets transported on a ship and that ship gets bombed. Mm. So then he's out on sea for, I think, five or seven days like just floating out in sea on a raft. Uh, so also unlucky. Then he gets found uh, lucky, but it's the Japanese again. And then they move him to like a different labor camp. And that camp was like a couple miles away from Nagasaki. But he literally saw the atomic bomb go off. Uh, and then he was uh, rescued a couple of weeks after that because the war ended. Uh, and he ended up living quite a long time. I think he got into like his 90s or something like that. But it's just an absolutely crazy story. It's like yeah. after you read a book like that, it's like you can't complain about anything. Like right. if your foot hurts or like, you know, you have a hard day at the office, you can't complain. Like this guy, you know, he was a prisoner of war for like two and a half years. Like th he didn't shower that whole time. He, you know, he lost like, you know, 80 pounds or something like that and just had to eat like rotten food to survive. But it's also like super inspiring. Like that's, how powerful like your mind is and like how powerful the human will is. And that's just like a super motivational book if you view it in the right way. Yeah, that's an incredible story. Do yeah. you prefer reading books about these types of stories over watching movies or do you enjoy both? I, I definitely still enjoy like watching movies, especially if they turn the book into a movie. Uh, that's like another fun strategy you could do. You know, if there's a book you love, watch, uh, you know, read the book and then watch the movie and compare the two. Or like, you know, I, I love the movie The Great Gatsby. And then, um, you know, so then I bought the book to read about it. And then I like, I, I love the book. Uh, so that's like a fun way or activity you could do. Yeah, yeah. Because the books go so deep, right? With the story. They give you so much more. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so you have a book called Learn to Love Reading, which shares yeah. quotes to inspire people to read. What is your favorite quote from the book and why? So I think it's, it's by Naval Ravikant. He has a lot of, he has a ton of great like reading quotes. But I think it's uh, read what you love until you love to read. Mm. So it's like whatever you love reading, whether it's like fiction books or nonfiction books or comic books, it's like read that uh, until you love to read because then you'll start expanding to different areas. So like I remember as a kid, you know, I loved reading comic books and like these uh, fiction books and that, you know, uh, it took a few years, but then eventually I went to like nonfiction and now I'm reading. Then I went like productivity and self-help and then uh, I'm sure in the future it's going to go into like philosophy mm -hmm. or like going to check out like classic books. So I think... The most important thing is to develop a passion for reading and it doesn't matter how you do it. Just, you know, read what you love until you love to read and then uh, the whole world kind of opens up for you. <laughs> 